Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. I am in studio at home with my friend, Mary Orton. She's a four-name wonder now. I think that we have to probably, at, at the start here, address the elephant in the room that Claudia and I are mortal enemies. Right. And for anyone who is just starting to learn about the saga today, um, it is because I had the audacity to befriend Jackie. And understandably, that is unacceptable to her. If I were your sister, I too would not allow you to have friends. Um, but I think if we're all being honest with each other, we know that Claudia would beat the shit out of me in a street fight, right? Like, I, I would know. have no shot. So, I don't know. I could see a scrappy Mary Orton <laughs> coming through. Well, well, my question is, um, can you digitally alter my voice and blur my face for this? For this, it's an anonymous. This yeah. you're, like, Just this to is preserve dangerous. My anonymity. This is dangerous work. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll, otherwise, I was thinking we could brainstorm like for the title. You could do something like, um, like Mary Orton is absolutely not the co-host of this podcast just to like throw you know something throw, subtle throw her off yeah, yeah, I'll tell yeah. her like Mary yeah. Orton canceled I did a solo pod like yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah, boring yeah. you yeah. don't want to listen maybe like a listener could could story it and just be like at girl with no job like don't listen today it sucked yeah also Mary Orton was not not the co-host that would be helpful <laughs> I'm thinking um, no, my friend Mary Orton is the title of today's episode because that is just your name now. I can't <laughs> say it other, <laughs> another way. And I know you have your husband's last name too. Yes. Scudelari. Scud- thankfully. Thankfully it's pronounced Scudelari. Scudelari. Because otherwise I would be Mary Scudelari. And actually, Mary funny Scud- enough. Then you'd be my friend Mary that, Scudelari. Right. That did not occur to me until I got a DM from a follower who was like, oh, now I understand why you didn't change your handle. And I was like, what? That's such a random thing to message somebody. And then and then she like ex- expanded upon that and, and said like, because your first and last name rhyme. And I was like, no. But your first name's Mary Orton. My first name is Mary Orton. <laughs> All one word. <laughs> last name Scudelari, thank God. Got it, but what do you go yes. by mostly, Mary Orton? Yeah, yeah, I mean like professionally I still do. Yeah. And then, um, and then in like personal life mom mode, I'm like, Mary Scudelari. So that I same can... as me. We have so much in common, oh Claudia. God, like, we're the same look person. <laughs> well, I'm so excited that you're here because the genesis of our friendship and yes. also like us discovering each other on the internet, I feel like yes. we kind of come from different spheres of the internet. So I'm so excited yes. for the toasters to get to know Mary Orton, even though the toasters who already know you are so excited that you're here. Oh my gosh, that's and I'm so excited nice. for the Ortonites. <laughs> to yeah, listen to the toes. Oh Hi, God. guys. <laughs> well, I have to say, I, and I told you this, I, like, discovered the podcast about 18 months ago, and I wish I could remember who, like, somebody must have posted it to their stories. I don't remember who, because I would like to find them and kiss them on the mouth, because yeah. they, like, I am so obsessed with the podcast. I listen every day. I, I should probably play it cool, like, like, oh, The Toast, your podcast? Like, oh, I've heard that? of it. Sure. Yeah, like, I'm pretty busy and important, so, like, I don't listen. But it's about two brothers, right? <laughs> um, but, no, I love the podcast so much. And I, like, I'm living every Toaster's dream right now, co-hosting with you. And so I have to. I think I have hair all over me. Um, I have to thank you. Like, you bring so much joy. This podcast is such a bright light. And I've told you that before, but I really mean it. It sounds like a throwaway comment, but I just... It's such a like wonderful thing to pop on every day and know that you guys are bringing like energy and fun and happiness and I just love it so much. So thank you. Thank you so much. That's what Claudia and I like to think that we do and, and believe do. that we do. But then when we get that positive reinforcement, especially from people that we know, like it it means a lot. And we're gonna keep on trucking. Oh my gosh. Well, no, when you um when you texted me and asked me to co host, first of all, it was on April Fools. So I was like, oh, Oh, that's where you we are. You have a lot of April Fool's trauma. I have a lot of April Fool's trauma. So I immediately was like, oh, that's where we are in our <laughs> friendship. We're, we're do, playing mean April Fool's jokes on each other. You're going to be like, Mary, you want to co-host? And I'm going to be like, of course. And you're going to be like, ha, gotcha. <laughs> I would never ask you. But then when you said it wasn't an April Fool's joke, I was like, oh, so she's either texting the wrong person or she's being held at gunpoint. Was it my mom, by the way? No. It doesn't matter. I'm honored to be here. I'm so excited to have you. You are, actually, I was thinking this morning, you're the first guest co-host that we've had on in a while that's like a first timer. Because everyone else that I have this week has been on the show in one way or another, maybe not co-hosting, but as a guest or 
guested with Claudia. Yeah. And this is like Mary Orton first time experience. Yes. And, and is everybody else a podcaster? So I'm, I'm. Josh. Yeah. Shannon. Yeah. Lauren Elizabeth, former podcaster. Okay. Stassi podcaster. I'm the I'm the loser in the middle. Well, it so makes we're gonna it we're gonna it's question. gonna be like hi Monday Tuesday and then it's gonna and then Thursday Friday. No Wednesday's like always pretty good views, but it begs the question <laughs> like the influencer to podcaster pipeline is okay a direct flight. Okay, so why have you never considered podcasting? Because also your content is very talky. Like we hear from you. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I've never. I mean, I think like as someone who creates content. What you guys do is so hard. I don't think that people like civilian non-content creators understand how lay hard people. it is, how the lay people, um, I don't know if they understand how hard it is to do what you do and do this every day and talk and have interesting things to say every single day. I mean, you guys have, if there's anybody watching for the first time. An Orton Knight. An, an Orton Knight who is n is not a regular toast listener like you must come back next week when claudia is back and see original recipe jackson claude because it is amazing actually because i am such a regular listener when my daughter was born i'm i'm pretty sure she came out of the womb and looked at me and was like who the hell are you like where's jackson claude like because she's heard your voice so many times in utero so that was um very disappointing for her oh yes yeah, so you out who her Parents were. Yeah. <laughs> You're a content creator and a mama of three, busy yes, bee. Yes, yes. And we are right on the heels of teething hell. I have not slept in two weeks. Oh, damn. How many teeth? <sighs> she's oh, so she's got the, the bottom two. Mm -hmm. she, um, my kids have been slow teethers. So she's nine months and she's just getting the top two. That's what's like ready to break through. And it has been hell for her i mean she's been poor thing has been in so much pain which is very different than my first two kids like my first kid was what we call a trick baby she like never had teething issues she slept really well she ate really well all the things so you think all babies are like that so yeah so she tricked us into having more children <laughs> and um and we fell for it and now we have three and and really like all three of my kids have been so so good and easy and healthy and whatever so no major complaints, but this was the first like real challenging teething experience where we were like, like, are, are we sure there aren't more drugs we can give this child? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was so bad, but but I'm here. You're here and I'm, I'm so here. excited that you're here. And it's so crazy that you also like are nine months postpartum. Yeah. How's yeah. that going? It's going well. It's um, it's going well. The I, I feel like the older two are, my, my oldest is four and then middle Liza just um, turned three and they're in a sweet spot where they're like besties and can play independently with each other and so that's really nice yeah we had one single week when Liza our middle was potty trained we potty trained her the week before I had my third so we had one gorgeous immaculate week with no diapers and then we were right back into it so damn it's been a journey Okay. As you well know. How close are your first two in age? 18 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. What are... are 18 months. Are, oh, they are. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So yeah. you know the whole, like, two, yeah. two and diaper thing. It's just... Yeah. I can't imagine, like, no diapers. Yeah. But uh, you, like, you know, in a, in a few months, you'll see it, too, where, like, Harry and Charlie will be besties, and they'll yeah. be, like, doing Legos together, Dude, and you and Zach will sit back. We can just no supervise. Yes. We don't have to get in the pen. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, that's going to be a major milestone. Yes. That's been really very exciting for yeah. us. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm so excited that you're here. And now, can you tell me about the genesis of Mary Orton? Because we we went to lunch. Yeah. Yes. We lunched. Ladies yeah. who lunch. Ladies who lunch. And I feel like we were talking about the beginning of your career. Yeah. Yeah. But you're kind of like an OG I want to say influencer, but I feel like when you started, that wasn't the term. It was more like blogger, fashion blogger, girly. Y yes, yes. I definitely started um, in the blogosphere. And and I always say, like, starting a blog was the most out of character thing I've ever done. <laughs> like, what I do now is, is, like, I would have never, ever, ever imagined. I was working for an investment bank, and I remember a colleague of mine talking about... Uh, fashion blogs and I was like what the hell is a fashion blog like and then I'm looking them up and I'm like who the hell are these women like putting pictures of themselves on the internet that's so embarrassing actually side note I was telling this story to someone recently at a lunch and there was a Gen 
zier at the table. And she was like, wait, what's embarrassing? And I was like, well, like putting pictures of yourself on the internet is just like an objectively humiliating thing to do. And she was like, what? well, now that's day rigor. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're like 23 and you don't remember a time before selfies. Yeah. You don't remember a time when it, it was not normal to be like, you taken. just like took your pictures and put them in your photo right, album. Right, right, right. And so anyway, so yeah, so I started, um, way back in like 2013, um, a blog and I was interested in kind of speaking to my demographic that I didn't feel was being spoken to, which, which was like young urban professional women who wanted to figure out how to infuse style into their working life. And at the time, I, I thought that I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm fascinated by these fashion blogs. I'm fascinated by the ways in which they're disrupting the landscape of of fashion and, and retail marketing. Um, but I cannot put pictures of myself on the internet. And I remember telling my um, husband and my best friend uh, about this and I was like, I'll just crop my head off. If for like, I'll, I'll just do mostly writing. And then if I have to show anybody like clothes on me, I'll just crop my head off. And they were, they were looking at me like, this is gonna like they're like they were watching a car crash yeah um so anyway so I started and that's what I did for the first nine months and somehow perhaps because like the blogosphere was in its infancy the blog did well and then no head headless no, oh, yeah fully headless and I anonymous I see that being extremely cool though anonymous yes. like who is this what was your blog called it, it it was it's been memorandum since um like 2014 it memorandum be, like right. who is she where is she it's giving gossip girl i well except like not at all cool like the sloppy crop of the point and shoot camera photos was was a real tragedy um but then i had the opportunity to work with one of my favorite brands and they were like we'd love to work with you but this whole like headless horseman thing is probably not <laughs> not gonna be okay with us and so I had to put my my face in photos and I don't think I slept for a month I was like so mortified yeah but at least so, you were so doing mortified. it from a place of success like you had a yeah it wasn't like you were really putting yourself out there to zero people yet like trying right. you know at least you had right. that platform a little bit where it's like yeah right. people care maybe yeah so so that was kind of do you still feel that way like yeah I mean camera shy yeah I think so like taking photos has never felt normal. What, how do you feel? Are you just so used to it and you feel? No, like when I step out and I ask my husband to take pictures of me, like that? it is a deeply uncomfortable experience. Right, right. And I feel like I've, I don't do it as much right now because I don't step out so much right now. But I feel like <laughs> even when I was doing, even in my heyday, like if we're going to dinner, like I want you to take a few pics of me. I'm dying yeah. inside the entire time. If we yes. didn't get the picture, I'm moving on from it. Right. It'll only right. ruin my night, but I'm right. not going to spend a long time like trying to take pictures in public. Like in, you can see me cringing in the photos. Oh, totally. And I'm sure you have the same um, like like war stories from from the years with your husband taking photos of your of you. Yeah. Um, and I remember I will never forget we were in, I think, Washington Square Park in New York and my husband was taking um, photos and I realized after we had been taking photos for a couple minutes that I had a piece of hair that had like flown up and was like this and I'm looking at the photos and I'm like are you kidding me and yeah. I'm like reading him the riot act in in public and I mean I'm not like yelling at him but I'm just like are you kidding no, I've had this thing in front of my face. I've been standing here like an idiot, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like going off. Like, are you even looking at the yeah, pictures? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you yeah. even give what, a is crap? Is this am I a joke to you? <laughs> and then, and then, does my work mean nothing to you? Right, right, right. And then I I look up at his face as I like pause mid rant, and he's going like this. And I was like, "Are you having a stroke?" And then I look to my right, and there's a girl standing there, and was like. Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, I just wanted to say I follow you and like um, I love what I thought what you, you were great. Do and um, now I'm feeling unsafe, so I'm gonna go now. You know, like <laughs> she, she just like this poor thing. Her face haunts me um, forever because of that moment. So no, it's such a vulnerable moment when you're asking someone to take your picture <laughs> and you're putting yourself out there and like there's just needs to be this like understood social contract that yes. like you're looking out for me yes I'm feeling unsafe and vulnerable yes. and yes. whatever I say in those moments I don't mean it 
Yes. And yes, my husband is a true pijam extraordinaire and um, did not leave me after that. Yeah, after the photo taking husbands God. are pijams. Does Ugh. he now know your angle? Like, is he now a pro oh, at it? Now he's a pro. Yeah, now he's a pro, and it's like boom, done. And he always makes sure I don't have like a weird mohawk coming up from behind. Oh, that's good. Um. So yeah. So we've really we've grown a lot together. That's beautiful. It really is. That is really beautiful. It's really- it's really special. Okay, so you started as a fashion blogger, and now you're yeah. a major content creator. I actually found yeah. your um, profile from like one of your many viral reels where oh, you were no. showing ladies how to wear a properly wear a scarf oh, around their God. neck. The, the, there were two videos. I think one like I saw your profile for the first time. I scanned okay. it. I was like, okay, nice, but I hadn't like hit the follow yet. Yeah, and yeah, then the okay. second one was the turtleneck video showing us how oh, to actually yes. wear a turtleneck. Yes. Hold it in. Yes. And I was like, oh, I need to, more tips like this in my life. Oh, so so since those videos, it's been very disappointing um, for you. No, no, I wouldn't say so. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely like tapped, like uh, shopped some tap to shop links. Oh wow, definitely influence. Oh okay. No, I like what I see. Oh, that's and so then nice I of feel you. like I started following you in the middle of your last pregnancy. Maybe oh. I had no idea you were pregnant, and oh, then you posted yeah. something that where it was like very. You were talking about being pregnant. I was like, yeah. Oh, I miss that. Yeah. How nice. And we were like pregnant, similar yes, timing. Yes, we were. Yeah. I gave, um, yeah, I gave birth to, to Gigi actually July 4th. And then, and then Charlie was born. August 14th. Yes. Okay. I knew we were close. Yeah. 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 So that's been our friendship origin story. Yes. And then you're down in Florida a good amount. So we got together a couple weeks ago. We had yeah. lunch. Yeah. We're just simpatico. Just simpatico until your sister kills me. Right, right, right. right. We'll, oh, we'll, we fight to the death. Yeah. Well, Turdy, if you're listening, I still love you. You know, you're my number one, and <laughs> no one will ever replace you. But my friend Mary Orton never, is, you know, never. And seriously, anybody listening for the first time, like, like, come back on Monday when Claudia is back. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You'll see oh, the real deal. But now that's on me to convince them, you yeah. know, through this show, <laughs> that it's a show worth watching. That's a lot of pressure, Jackie. But, but you, I know you can rise to the the challenge do you i'm taking a drink here and i'm so afraid of your oh, listeners who are gonna she's yell a real at me. toaster she Wait, knows the okay, drama do, so good at this. She pushes the can, she's the mic- pushing her mic away to take a sip of her ice i did make us iced coffees in so here's the thing it's either okay. going to be a noisy reusable glass mm. or it's going to be a non-noisy single use cup pick your fighter yeah and you and you picked the um eco-conscious fighter today classic me classic jackie classic jack's being eco-conscious but i'm so i'm cracking up that you like know all of the ins and outs of the community drama no i am yes i am um very much aware of these these issues and i have never once as a daily listener i've never once noticed a click of a of a ice cube or a so like when you guys talk about it i'm like who are these people Giving Thank the girls you, grief. Orton. Thank you, Mary Wharton. We're talking for God over an forbid. hour. We need a sip of a cold beverage. And do you not support women in hydration? I don't support women in hydration, which is actually an amazing segue into the Fast Five Stories today. We yes. have great stories. We also have Dear Toasters, and we're getting Mary Wharton's advice. So I have a feeling it's going to be a different brand of advice. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to, see, to to hear what problems we have to face today. It's very exciting. We're going to help out our dear toasters. And let's get into it. Before we do, I have to let you know that today's episode of Women in Hydration is brought to you by Liquid IV. So as stated by Mary Orton and I, hydration is key liquid iv is the best because it is a hydration multiplier a single stick of liquid iv makes ordinary hydration extraordinary with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness liquid iv is the number one powered hydration brand in america it has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks you can tear pour and live more so just grab a water bottle grab your liquid iv stick pour it in and you are ready to go I need extra hydration because I do not drink enough water in my day. And Juliana, I need a lot of water if I'm going to 
be looking hydrated and well. If you are hungover, a liquid IV never hurt nobody. So turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code toast at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code toast at liquidiv.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Rails. This is an incredibly exciting sponsor today because Claudia and I just got so many cute things from Rails, but also my dress today is from Rails. And I want to pretend like I was savvy enough to choose it because Rails was going to be a sponsor, but that's not why. I actually wanted to go with like a Mary Orton approved look. And it's so beautiful on you. It thank really you so is. so much. So I wound up with this gorgeous Rails dress. So you know we love luxury and Rails makes luxury essentials accessible. They're an LA-based brand that blends their California roots with an elevated European aesthetic and the fabrics feel as good as they look. Seriously. I love all of the pieces that I've gotten from Rails. This is my first time wearing this dress, but it's so cozy. The material is just heavenly and it really flatters the female shape. Build your closet with elevated staples like luxe button downs and statement making sets or get event ready in their dreamy satin dresses such as this. Basically, if you're shopping for spring, go to rails.com right now, R-A-I-L-S dot com and take 15% off your order with the code TOAST15. Rails.com with code TOAST15, that's 15% off your order. Thank you, Rails. Today's episode is also brought to you by AG1. So we are back on AG1, and like we talked about when we discussed Huberman Gate a few weeks ago, this is a heavily researched and legitimized brand. Debunker aside, they know that taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last few years, we've been drinking AG1, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes us feel energized, focused, nourished. Again, like an easy way to get the vitamins and nutrients that you're probably skipping out on. Just get her done with AG1. That's their new slogan. Get her done with AG1. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers our daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Their team of in-house, their in-house team of doctors, scientists, and researchers work with third-party experts to, to conduct a set of scientific studies and further validate the benefits of AG1. And that is why we know we can trust this product. Their website is full of research and more information that we don't even have the time to talk about. Truly. You can feel the difference too if you stopped drinking AG1 like for a few days. You know, sometimes no one's perfect. But you can tell and you get home and you're like, I need my AG1. If there's one product that we have to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash toast. That's drinkag1.com slash toast. Check it out. Okay, our first story today is a little bit, again, I feel like the leading story every day this week has it been in one way or another, Taylor and Travis News. However, today these stories are coming in separately. Okay. Because Taylor Swift, the Museum of the Tortured Poets Department Academy, which is her new album, which drops on Friday. I don't know if you realize that. New Taylor album. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that until yesterday. Her Dead Poet Society album is dropping on Friday. So she is in her pre-promo era. And there's a bit of a tailored museum in LA that's uh, presented by Spotify where she's sharing lyrics and Easter eggs about the album. But there are also Easter eggs and hidden messages about her relationship with Joe Alwyn. And this is in collaboration with her, so she's part of curating this. Yes, like she okay. gave like these, they're all like typed up on typewriters, like okay. lyrics and motifs, I want to say. Okay. And one strong motif that I've seen is like she is talking about this statue from the 6th century that was meant to be a gift. It was like a statue of like fertility and womanhood. And it never was gifted and it kind of like decayed and rotted and decomposed okay and like it's giving you know that was me in my relationship ah a metaphor if you will it's giving metaphor and i think what maybe she's saying is like she was with joe alwyn for six years like no marriage no kids like i'm just like a woman decomposing over here okay i actually had a dream last night that taylor swift had twins and she named them olivia and doreen and Doreen. Doreen. 
Is is does, is there a Doreen in Taylor Swift for, folklore? Doreen came from nowhere. Came Olivia from is nowhere. at least like the name of her cat. Olivia Benson. Olivia is just oh, a gorgeous name. It's a gorgeous name. But then there was baby Doreen. Yeah, I would have gone Olivia and Jackie, Claudia, Margo. Margo. <laughs> no, that those are some names off the top of my head that I would have chosen. Usually I don't pair with Olivia. Usually I don't share my dreams. I'm not a dream sharer. Like, can you find a more uninteresting topic? No, but no, no. I like it. It's germane to this story. It is. She had two baby twin girls with Travis. Okay. And we even got names, Olivia and Doreen. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine th- them having ch- I mean, yes. It so I am not a a Taylor. I'm not a Swifty, but I I and and like you and I have talked about this. I don't know when everybody hauled off and like listened to every deep track. Yeah. Um, I said it was probably when you were having kids. I feel yes. like everyone was like passive fans okay. up until the re-recordings. I want, that's how I see it. I feel yeah. like after Reputation and then like Lover, then like all these, East, with the new albums, there were so many Easter eggs yeah. and then we got vault tracks and people just like threw themselves down the rabbit hole. But I also, I feel the same way where it's like, oh, I've been a Taylor Swift fan for 15 years. I love all of her music. I actually know the words to all of her songs, but okay. I missed that. I didn't get on that ride. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, that's where Claudia like will call me a hater for that. And I'm like, I literally couldn't be more of a fan. Yeah, no, I have so much respect for Taylor and her fandom. And I, I'm just, I'm, I, it's just like such a phenomenon to me. Yeah. I like want to study it. Um, but I think the Easter egg thing is, it seems to me to be such like a dangerous thing because wouldn't that be exhausting to keep up? Oh, it seems exhausting for her to like plant these things for people to keep up. And then I would also yeah. be a little worried that people might misinterpret the eggs because it's yes. not like a direct... So what if people like got it wrong and everyone's like, Taylor said this and it's like, no, 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 that's not what I was saying. Yes. Like about this statue even. Yes, yes. So that seems to me to be really just a lot to take on in perpetuity. That you're always supposed to have like so many hidden meanings. Yeah, and like, I think what there's if a... you want to just like walk into a room and say good morning? Right. No, it's you know? coded. And then people are like counting, and that's that. I have to say, is like I have seen that on on the interwebs of just people being like, okay, she walked in and said good morning. There are 17 letters in that phrase, and 17 minus four is 13. Yeah, like that. It's giving kind of QAnon. <laughs> it's giving QAnon. You know what it reminds me of? Did you ever read the, or watch the movie, uh, the series of unfortunate events? I know, I, I know it. I, I haven't seen it. If you it. didn't read the books. Okay, yeah, yeah. so there's like three kids. They're all very gifted, and they're yeah. like orphaned, and they're going through turmoil. Yeah. And the oldest daughter like decodes stuff, and like okay. she'll see a letter, and she's like count like a written letter okay. and she like pulls out like all the capitalizations and it's an anagram yeah. for like the secret that's what taylor yes. swift is doing i'm yes. sure she read those books too yes yeah count olaf it's giving yeah. count olaf yeah no that's and and by the way like quick side note i i know this has been discussed widely why must every children's show begin with like a dead mom or or just fully orphaned children why <laughs> It's a great question. Why are they always trying to kill us? Jackie? I don't I don't know. I feel like people are aware Especially of it. Especially Disney. Especially like, Disney. Always kill the mom. People are aware of it, but they don't like question it. Okay. And it, I feel like it's shows that are at a certain age. Like okay. right now, like toddler shows, no. But w- like we were just um, watching The Lion King and the mom mm. is irrelevant in The Lion King. Mm. So that's yeah, a different yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah, that's and it's one the of dad. the rare dead dad stories. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just, um, yeah, I feel and attacked. It's, by, even like the newer phenomenon. ones are doing that, like Frozen, of course, yeah, the ship. Yeah, yeah. Moana? No, but she still has to go out. It's as if like the kids can't the have. Mama dies right away. Right. But it's as if like the yeah. kids can't go on their like growth journey while mm. under the foot of their parents. But it's like okay. maybe we're not supposed to be going on our journey at 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. Has Harry. Wait, Harry is how old? Two. He's okay. So he he has not asked you about death yet. No. Okay. That's when did fun, your kids? Um, I think Coco. I, I like she's still she's four and she still doesn't like totally know what it means. She doesn't understand the finality of it. Yeah. So I shared this on my on my um, Instagram a couple weeks ago, but I was making her a grilled cheese for lunch, and it was like a special Yum. treat, and she was really excited. And she said to me, "Mommy, I have not had grilled cheese in like." 10 years 
And I said, wow, that's a really long time. That's, you know, that's longer than you've been alive, sweetie. And she turned green and said, was I dead? (laughs) It's a good question. And I, um, you know, like any good parent, just immediately distracted, immediately segued into something else that I could avoid that difficult conversation with my child. Yeah, because also I'm sure now like the movies that they're watching, there's, is that what you're saying? Like you're yeah, watching yeah, yeah. those so, things so, where there's the yeah. death. Because even when we were watching Lion King, I skipped over that part because one, like not appropriate. And two, yeah. oh, we yeah. were just we were just there for Hakuna Matata. So 100%. I just like fast forwarded two. But it's definitely something that I've noticed. And I'm like, oh, n- n- we're not there yet. Yeah, so she knows it's something dramatic, but I don't think she understands the finality of it. Um, so it's really, it's been a fascinating time since she locked onto that. And, uh, and it's also, um, it's also something that I think in like, you know, around Easter time when there's discussion about, you know, Jesus dying on the cross, right. that whole thing, they become really fixated on it cause they're hearing about it in school, whatnot. So it's, um, it's been a wild ride in my house. Yeah. That's Death talk. I feel like that's one of a couple of hard conversations as a parent. Yeah, yeah. So I am looking into military boarding school. But I don't even remember when I learned about it or how I learned about it. I don't either. You just kind of ease into it. Yeah, 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 it's a lot. It's a lot. That is. That we signed up for. It is a lot. Well, that's actually a great segue into part B of our first story, which was Taylor and Travis news. And that's that Travis will be hosting Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It is confirmed. We had talked about it a few weeks ago. He was in talks, but Amazon's Prime Video is doing a spinoff game show called Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? So it will have adult contestants answering sixth grade level questions with the help of some famous faces. They've ordered 20 episodes of the show hosted by Travis. Okay. This is exciting. I think he'll be so good at this, right? I think so too. And it's like, are you smarter than a sixth grader, yeah. Travis? And well, well, that's kind of the interesting thing because not whether or not he's smarter than a sixth grader, but if you are like a celebrity who might need to go on those shows for like press and yeah. whatever, being the host is kind of great because you're never in the hot seat, right? Yeah. So well, let's kind see. Of like, get out of jail free card trap. it sounds like it would be a fun concept it will depend what celebrities they have on yeah. but i feel like he's really affable and he likes yes. to have a good time and but hosting i feel like they think anyone can host claudia and i always say this yes and it's like it's not just something anyone can do like no. it is a skill yes and he has a podcast so he might actually be skilled yes. and ready for this and not yes. a bad choice by any means but just because you're a celebrity or an actor or a singer like doesn't yes. mean that you're a host yes and like justice for the hosts yeah who that's their trade yes for the for the 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 communications majors out there for justice the, for them yeah they're just being erased or or like broadcast journalists yeah i especially agree with you when you talk about this with regards to like interviews on red carpets right like the the questions are so bad yeah it's never interesting. So nobody really watches those shows anymore. Yeah, but really. like there are people, they go to school for yeah, that. Yeah. That's let's their, hire them. Let's, let's hire them. Let's do those ones. Yeah. Not the celebrity who has nothing to say. Right. Not that I would be good at that either, but let's find the expert. Let's, yeah. Let's find the trained professional. Um, I th- And this also makes me think, when was the last time this show was airing? Because it was, our, it started out, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, Yes, right? it was on Fox. And I don't know when it ended. Okay. It, 2007 is when it started. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I This does make me sort of nostalgic for like when I was, I don't know, I guess in, in high school maybe, when it was like the height of those, of, of like who wants to be a, a millionaire. Yeah. And I kind of miss those days where everybody watched something. Now you know? there are so many game shows and so many streamers and everyone has their yeah. own thing, yeah. but there's not like the big one. Right. Well, what I, what I, I, it, I was having this conversation with a friend who works for one of the big streamers and I was watching, I'm forgetting what show it was, but it was one where they had the audacity to be dropping it on a weekly basis. And I was saying to her, I was Love like, is blind? no, um, I haven't seen that. Like, don't kill me. I haven't seen that one. It's okay. Um, you came at a good time because now discussion has ended yeah okay um but i was but i was saying like how dare you not drop everything at once so that i can binge it right and she was talking to me about how it 
uh, you know, the, the full season drop is so difficult from a PR perspective because when everybody is watching on a weekly basis, then in the press, they have a better cadence for like knowing when it's appropriate to talk about each episode. Yeah. And so when it's dropped all at once, people are kind of like, well, what part of it do I talk about? And I just miss those days when you would like go to school after everybody had watched last night's episode. Yeah. Where like they missed the million dollar question or whatever, you know, those kinds of, you know, bringing people together. I agree. Shows. And I understand from a PR perspective yeah. and they want to, drag it out and get everyone yeah. excited but it's like okay so when you started the binge watching right and you made us uh, addicts yes. where was your pr concerns then right you know you did this that's the issue it's like i we were always getting ep episodes weekly and we weren't complaining we need more now right. and it was actually right. kind of crazy when they put all seasons at once and it started yes. this like behavior of people like staying in all weekend to watch a show which yeah. is when you think about it, so unhealthy, but so normalized right now. But like, that wasn't what life was like when we were growing right. up, that you would just sit in your house and stare at your TV set right. for 48 right. hours and then go back to school. Right, 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 yeah. The streamers gave us. They the they made us addicts, and now we have withdrawal. Yeah, withdrawal, yes. Yeah. But I think that, that that's what they wanted. They like yeah. want us to be addicted. I'm breaking free from the cycle. <sighs> it's, it's very upsetting. It's all very upsetting. Yeah, well, this is g exciting news, not upsetting yeah. news. And I think I I'll be good at it. Agree. Do you think Taylor will be a guest? I don't. I don't think so. But honestly, I feel like every time I call something about these two, like, oh no, they wouldn't. Like they do. I I could agree more. You know like, what I mean? At the outset, I was so on board with. I think it was Claudia who was like, "I promise you, these two people have never met." And I was like, "Yes." Yeah. And then we were. It's like there's no way she would go down to the field. It's no way no. she would. He would go to her show. Yes. There's no way. Like Coachella, if you told me they were going to Coachella, they were going to be in the pit and they were going to go to Neon yeah. Carnival and listen yeah. to James Kennedy DJ, yeah. I would have said like, "No way." Never. So and now when I see this, I'm like, "Oh, there's no way she would like infringe on like his gig." Mm. But I don't think he sees relationships in the world like that. I think he's yeah. like, "Come on, baby, it's fun." Not like yeah. you're stepping on my toes and making me feel emasculated. Yes. That, he, he certainly seems to be so supportive and so um, confident. confident and secure. Yeah. And like, we both have our things. And and like genuinely excited for her. Yeah. Which must be so exciting. Yeah. You know, for her. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. So I will, I'll check it out. I'm happy for him. Yeah. On uh, Amazon Prime, you said? On Amazon Prime. All right. Our next story is a bit of sports news. You know we love sports, but... Um, Caitlin Clark, who is the women's basketball player who's been breaking records, setting records, making headlines, yes. has just been drafted to the WNBA and her salary has people in a tizzy. Oh. Yes. So she was the first draft for the WNBA and she will be making, I need to pull up the, um, here. And she's going where? to the she's going to the hold on indiana the indiana fever the i indiana love the indiana fever. fever caitlin clark is going to the indiana fever now a fever the conversation is about her salary because she is making in five years roughly like three uh, right under four hundred thousand dollars so when you break it out year by year it's like seventy nine thousand eighty thousand per year okay. to be the number one the best in the wmea Yikes. and then you compare it to the men's basketball and right. the first pick for men's victor webb and yama got a 55 million dollar contract Ooh. and so people are upset mm. about that which is upsetting when you think about it. But the problem is I feel like everyone who's upset about it, like seriously wouldn't be caught dead watching the WNBA. So like you're part of the problem. Right. I think that's, I think that's spot on. I mean, it is a, it is a business. Right. Like they make so much money. At the end. Right. Like you can't even compare. And so to right. be upset, I saw like Hoda was talking about it on her show and she was upset that 55 million compared to like 400,000, which is insane. And like, I, you know, she's saying it's like a gender pay gap mm. and of course it's gendered because people yeah. want to watch the men play and the women for whatever reason i don't right. watch either so this isn't i don't contribute to this issue i'm right. proud to say right um but it's a business right yeah I, I yeah i see both sides of the argument and i 
I, but I also feel like, you know, the, the suggestion with regard to the complaints about it, the suggestion is that the WNBA is making the same amount of bringing in the same amount of revenue as the NBA and is just like sitting on all the cash and only giving Caitlin five dollars, right. which I don't which think, is not, which is not what it not is. The and case. I, but I, yeah, sorry, no, I was going to say like the issue is a smaller issue of the bigger issue, which is just mm -hmm. a, the WNBA versus the NBA, and like yes. why is one organization like so massive and the other is not? Yeah. But that just comes down to like people being interested in something you like right. can't for like you can't, I can't make fetch happen I feel that way a little bit about what they're doing here with soccer and that's uh, men so yes. I'll go ahead and say it like I don't know how much money can you spend can you get people to care about yeah. something yeah in the way that they care about sports like yeah. you can't even you can't market for that like that's right. just an organic right. thing right well maybe Caitlin will succeed in changing that and bringing more eyeballs and more revenue to the WNBA because I mean people have just been so captivated by her yeah and she's so talented. Yeah. Maybe and she'll, she'll bring in more viewers. She'll definitely get endorsement deals yeah. and she'll make plenty of money. Yes. But it just like speaks to this bigger issue of the WNBA versus the NBA, which yeah. is a bigger, a big issue before Caitlin Clark came on the scene. Yeah. Yeah. I had an uncle who is now passed who loved watching the WNBA because he was an avid like basketball player himself. Mm -hmm. And watching the women was more like the way that women, you know, in in the NBA, women's basketball players play is more akin to like a normal person playing versus in the NBA, the men are doing so many like tricks and superhuman type things. Um, so maybe Caitlin will just bring a lot of people and, um, you know, solve the problem. Yeah, that would be great. But like, great. I'm sorry, you guys have to watch. Like everyone who's angry about it, like, are you watching the WMA? Yeah. Otherwise, what is there to say? But I'm sure you caught the NBA finals and you can name like 10 NBA players. Yeah. So again, I don't watch either. Not my problem. <laughs> I'm not a part Same. of the problem. So. I am neither the problem Just nor like the solution. An yeah. objective. And of course, like it's messed up. Like this girl's at the peak of talent. Yeah, yeah. But she's in the wrong industry then if she right. was the year to make millions. And I feel like, and I, I, want, I can't remember if Claudia and I had this exact conversation, but there are jobs, not necessarily sports. The only sport I can think of where women's is a lot better than men's is gymnastics. Oh, love gymnastics. And also I was thinking of volleyball. Is there men's volleyball? Yes, there is. See? For sure. But it's all about the women. Yes. But I also feel that way. Like there are jo industries and jobs where like women f make so much more than their male counterparts, like yeah. modeling. We've got our things. We've got our things too. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like stream WMBA or yeah. else like or else. Keep it shut. Like yeah. it is what it is. But I'm happy for her. I'm happy. I hope she does great things. I hope people do stream WMBA and, and one day she gets a fifty five million dollar contract. I'm gonna manifest it for Agreed. her. Agreed. I will join you. Our next story. Rebecca Minkoff has been shooting for the Real Housewives of New York City. So yeah. Do you watch any Real Housewives of New York City? I don't watch the new, so I'm so, with you. So I watch no reality TV, which is obviously a character flaw. I I, I don't, don't think so. know how, like, I don't know how to get into it now. Yeah. Because I'm so far gone. Like, what, like, which franchise do I choose? Do I just start at season one and I just have to, like, catch up on 22 seasons of each, each franchise? Um... But this is the reboot, right? Yes. So and if how, you were to start something, yes. actually starting Roni reboot, you could yeah. watch last season and yeah. this is the new one. The issue is, is that that's not the greatest. Okay. Because the original seasons, like that's where legends were made. Yes. Now they're trying to recreate the magic. I don't think anybody who watched Roni reboot first season is like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. I think it had its moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people like resonated with some of the cast members, but it's not the magic of Ramona and Luann and Sonia. Okay. I, I have to say that everything I know about um, reality TV, I know from this show. Okay. And so we'll be aligned. And yeah, so we'll be aligned. But also um, the way that I have like internalized your and, and Claudia's opinions on reality stars that, that I've, I've never watched. Um, I was at the grocery store, like at the height of the Sandoval stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a tabloid um, with Tom Sandoval's face. It's like, Tom, Tom Sandoval, blah, blah, blah. And I'm standing there with my husband and it, and we were like getting donuts or something with, with the girls on a weekend day. And I was like, oh, Tom Sandoval. I hate that guy. And Rich was like, who, who is that? And why do you hate him? And I was like, 
no idea. Best. <laughs> um, Jackson Claude. Told you him. And uh, them's the rules. Them's the rules. Well, on that one, that wasn't even a hot take of ours. I know. Now that was that, like the universe. Now our the hot take is... Raining, around, raining on that guy, yeah. The take that's warm now is give Sandoval grace. Okay, okay. Which, sorry, let me give an asterisk. Give Sandoval grace if he is going to continue to be on the reality show that yes. we are watching with people who will not speak to him. It's not good for the sake of the yes. reality show. Therefore, we should give him some grace so we can move forward. That's... Yes. That's the take now. Yes, and I that that I'm sure that's a very good take, and just like the take that to you know maybe stop like dehumanizing him and, and right, 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 like, publicly like flogging him is is probably yeah, yeah. Um. So wait, so for this reboot, how did the first season do? I think because wasn't there a discussion about whether it was gonna continue? Or, yeah, or... I think it was decent. Okay. It wasn't amazing, but definitely not like terrible and abysmal that they are gonna pull the plug. Okay, Jenna Lyons was on the first season. And she's not coming back for the she's, second season. Okay, she's officially not coming back. Yes. Okay. So Rebecca Minkoff is now rumored to be filming for the show as well. Unclear if she'll be the full cast member, friend of. But I wouldn't be surprised if she's full. And okay. this is, they're getting, you know, another fashion heavyweight to replace yeah. the other one. Because I think people were really excited about Jenna Lyons when the first season premiered of New Roni. That mm -hmm. was the only recognizable name. Yep. And I think they, they want that clout still so mm -hmm. this is a really great substitution yes and yes. she i i don't know her personality wise but definitely we like to watch interesting women and yeah i think she has the makings of very interesting yeah women. she's very very talented and i i've i've met her a couple times and she's very humble nice brag. humble oh my gosh yeah she met rebecca minkoff turdy yeah <sighs> Um, but she's very, she's very nice and kind and like, I would put her in the same bucket as Jenna Lyons is kind of serious. And, um, this seems sort of like out of the typical of what I, what one might expect her yeah. to do. Um, so that makes it exciting and interesting and she will lend that, yeah, that fashion. And I feel like for, for a New York based Real Housewives, you've got to have like a, a fashion player in there, right? Yeah. You know? I agree with that. Yeah. And for the interest of people like she could bring in new yeah. viewers and they kind of they could always use more viewers yeah yeah so i think having like that name will be very exciting for people it even happens on beverly hills sometimes like when they cast denise richards and it was like oh my god we know her right. and it, even sometimes the most recognizable housewife isn't the best housewife in fact mm. usually it's not because they have a lot to lose um yes. but it's definitely throws an interesting factor into the mix yeah so i'm here for it me too are you ready for our next story, which is a bit of legal news that we had discussed over the years that now um, the wheels of justice have churned out and this is what we got. So if you remember, two Anna de Armas fans were suing Universal Studios for false advertising because they went to rent the movie yesterday on Amazon Prime and Anna de Armas was in the trailer and they watched the whole movie only to find out that she had been cut. And they said that was false advertising and so they sued. So the two men who rented yesterday on Amazon Prime only to discover that Ananda Armas was not in the final cut of the film have settled their false advertising lawsuit. They sued Universal in 2022, alleging that they were each cheated out of $3.99. A federal judge initially sided with them, finding that movie trailers are not immune from false advertising claims. But various setbacks followed, leaving the men on the hook for $126,000 in universal legal fees. On Friday, they accepted a settlement that will resolve the case. The terms were not disclosed and neither side responded to a request for comment. However, from the evidence of the court filings, nobody was happy with the outcome. Universal believes it was forced to spend two years and hundreds of thousands of dollars defending a patently frivolous lawsuit. Meanwhile, the plaintiff's class action lawyers who initially believed the claim was worth millions ended up believing that California's courts are rigged in favor of the Hollywood studios. And and to be clear, th you said three ninety nine. They were robbed of three ninety nine. That's three dollars and ninety nine cents. Cents, which was the purchase price of the film. Yeah. Oh dear God. I mean, it is like sets an interesting precedent. I feel like so often you watch a movie trailer and there's like a funny line in it, and then you watch the movie and the line is actually not in it. Now I don't feel like yes. so offended that I need to sue, um, but. Maybe we should be keeping our trailers honest. Universal took, totally. They took the position that movie trailers are works of art and therefore they should be protected by the First Amendment. They warned that if they were merely treated as advertising, viewers could sue every time they thought a movie didn't live up to the trailer. Yes, so true. Facts. Mean, it's, Facts. 
I, in my opinion, it is totally wild that they included her in the trailer and she's not in the film. Like, yeah. that's objectively wild, right? Yeah, but I think it... But do we sue over that? No, we don't We don't sue. Oh my God. I think that um, she, it was before she was a big actress, so she filmed some stuff, and then when they made the trailer for Prime, she was a bigger actress, so they put her in it. Oh I don't even... Or, and, like, when you search, like, if I want to go watch all... Anna de Armas movies you yeah. search her and then she could come up in oh my yesterday because technically okay. she's in the movie and she probably got paid for it but she didn't make okay. the final cut but she's a part of the movie okay I see both sides I totally I totally see both sides because I think it's a very annoying thing to do and yet it is it's not a frivolous lawsuit right yeah also the movie is bad so oh, they should have been sued for that <laughs> for the waste of time and to you and that like to Universal's point if you know you're allowed to sue every time it's false trailer. advertising it looked good but it wasn't yeah it looked good but it was trash um yeah that that establishes some dangerous precedent yeah very Yikes. interesting and also like i wonder how like anna feels yeah she probably is pissed that they include her in the, that yes. they included her in the yes. in the trailer where yeah. is anna de armas i don't know has she done anything since the um the Marilyn Monroe. I don't know. I feel like she was everywhere. And yeah. then all of a sudden, remember when she was dating Ben Affleck? I really would have bet money on them and, oh. I would, and been wrong. Huh. Nothing since Blonde. Okay. She's taken time off. She deserves it. Yeah. After that big trailer gig and then the After Marilyn trailer gate. Gig. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's probably like, I want to lay low for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people are like smearing my good name. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That's crazy. It's crazy on all sides. Yeah. Well. So I'm glad they settled. Glad they settled. Speaking of content that is living up to the hype, today's episode is brought to you by Mary and George, our new favorite show on Stars. Mary and George is a Stars original inspired by the story of Mary Villiers, who molded her beautiful and charismatic son George to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Through outrageous scheming, the pair rose from humble beginnings to become the richest, most titled, and influential players the English court had ever seen. Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galzatine are starring in the show. Critics are obsessed, calling it sexy, witty, and darkly rewarding. Watch Mary and George only on Stars and the Stars app. Curdy and I are truly obsessed with period pieces, and Mary and George is no exception. Mary is played by Julianne Moore. It pretty much has nothing to do, who pretty much has nothing to her name, but she's desperate to elevate her social standing. Relatable queen, literally. Watch now on Stars and the Stars app. I am so excited. This show is so good. I love a period piece, a well done one, and I love a story that I didn't previously know. Thank you to Stars and Mary and George. I'm dying to see that. Yeah. Dying. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prolon. These days, a lot of people are learning all about the benefits of fasting, like weight loss, mental and physical performance, and gut health, but worry about the whole not eating part. Well, that's exactly why Prolon was created. Prolon is a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe they're fasting. It's been researched and developed for decades at USC's Longevity Institute and backed by leading US medical centers. Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar, support cardi cardiovascular health, and reduce abdominal fat. But Prolon isn't a diet, it is a science. It is science based on Nobel Prize winning discoveries in medicine. All this starts with Prolon's five-day program. Snacks, soups, beverages, all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. So right now, Prolon is offering the Toast listeners 10% off their five-day nutrition program. Go to prolonlife.com slash toast. That's P-R-O-L-O-N life.com slash toast for this special offer. That's prolonlife.com slash toast. Check it out. Thank you to Prolon. Our fifth and final story. Is it a sports story? It is. Since this is my favorite sports, sports podcast. It is not a sports story, even oh. though this is this should be a boxing match between Kelly Clarkson and her ex, Brandon Blackstock. Ooh, yeah. Yikes. So more lawsuits between Kelly and her former mans. He hit back at her in a new lawsuit after the $2.6 million ruling that we shared a few weeks ago. On Monday, he responded to her latest lawsuit in which she claimed he should pay her more than $2.6 million um, that the California Labor Commissioner ruled that he owed her for illegally acting like an unlicensed talent agent since 2007 when she entered into an oral agreement with his family's company. 
Per the documents obtained by page six, he denied each and every allegation made by Kelly and argued the filing should be dismissed because the labor commissioner's ruling was made in November 2023. Since Kelly failed to file a notice of appeal within 10 days from when the decision was made, I'm choked up because he's coming for my girl, ma'am. Yeah, from a sweetheart. From when the decision was made in order to request more than the $2.6 million that was ruled upon, he and his attorneys claim it is outside the proper jurisdiction to file a separate lawsuit now, according to the docs. Jeez, this man. Take the L, bro. Take the L. And it's like, I feel like sometimes maybe somebody's name is spirit and, and they don't deserve it and they're going to fight yeah. tooth and nail to clear it up. Mm. But this is Kelly. Like, I just don't see a world in which she is the villain of this story and how you could ever change people's minds about that. Yeah. No, you're never going to do it. It's impossible. She's Cl- Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. She is beloved Eternally and it, beloved. it's so funny that her power and she's so powerful it comes from love like it doesn't come from like fear or like she's just this big almighty person it's like she's wormed her way into our hearts yeah and you can't fight that right so she's trying to file this now and he's responding to, okay. yeah saying that like this is a yeah. garbage suit because she yeah. said he owes 2.6 million dollars yeah. because he was like acting as her agent like yikes yikes I could just so she wants to to, to sort of claw back the commissions yeah. that were earned under false pretenses. Yeah. Yikes. That is, um, I, I mean, knowing nothing about the specifics of this case, I also am just like, oh, but wouldn't you want to be done yeah. on both sides? Like, but I don't just want to be. I agree with that, but I feel like from what I've seen, he's not letting stuff go too. Yeah. Like he's trying to get houses and this and that. So she's just like, oh, okay. well, you want to go there? I'm going here. He tried to get their prenup thrown out. Oh, that would have been nice for him. Yeah. You know? Like this man can't needs blame to stop. A guy. Can't blame a guy for trying. Right. I feel like for him, he needs to let it go. Like he needs yeah. to. Does he, what does he do? Do we know what he does? So I think that he was like working as a talent agent. His dad is a big agent, I think. He was like okay. Reba's husband, actually. An agent? Okay. I don't know. Uh, he's in the industry. Actually, he, the husband, Brandon, was um, Blake Shelton's agent for a time. But then when things went south with him and Kelly, Blake Shelton dropped him. Got it. And so was he acting as like a fake agent for all of these people? Because no. that's the basis of this lawsuit, right? That I don't know that if he was, was not in fact a licensed agent. Great question. I mm. don't know if he was fake for them or just like he was hand like him and Kelly never had a contract. Uh, so he was just like being the husband, like, oh, I'll negotiate this uh, for you, babe. Okay, okay. It's like, oh, well, no. Oh, yikes. Messy. That's so messy. And yeah. And does she have any she has a new album coming out or just she her album came out in the spring so yeah. almost a year ago okay. but it good i'm so i'm just a year behind you're That's just great. one year okay. behind but you're never okay. too late because her music is timeless and eternal <laughs> so true and if you and i so and true. even the older albums to me like are are yeah. her greatest works like piece by piece yeah. album yeah um i mean we could go all the way back you know all i ever wanted it's just it all yeah. ages like a fine wine yeah how can she sing since you've been gone if you won't go the fuck away if you won't be gone yeah 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 it's a great question yeah so Mm. just him again what can you do classic brandon blackstock classic poor kelly i know justice for kelly it's like and she has just so much great things going on for her and you just feel this is just like an anchor like tethered to her ankle like well that's and that but that's what brings me back to the idea that like from if i mean from just her let him have two point like, six mil. Yeah, but but he's already taken so much, Jackie. Here here I am, knowing nothing about the specifics, and I'm I'm just immediately on board with Kelly and feel that she's been um, maligned. Maligned. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I stand with Kelly. I to no surprise Kelly. to no one. Yeah. Ugh. Are you Horrible. ready for Dear Toasters? Mary Orton, it's your time. Jackie, I'm so excited for Dear Toasters. And as someone who was born in the late 1900s, I do feel like I've seen some shit, you know? Yeah. I've seen some shit and I and I have some advice to give. I agree. I'm excited to hear your advice. So <laughs> Dear Toasters is our weekly advice segment. You can submit to deartoasters at gmail.com. You can submit on our website if you want it to be more anonymous, and we will give you advice as best as we can. Can I ask you, have you ever, this is one of my favorite segments that you guys do, and have you ever had, um, I love it when you when you give advice and then you say, 
play this play this episode for your boyfriend and let him let him listen to what we have to say. And and so I'm wondering, have you ever heard from the other party? No, because if we had, okay. we would update you everyone. Would like okay. anytime okay. there's any sort of update, okay. we share it. So okay. I just like to think when there's no update, it's like you took our advice. It yeah. worked swimmingly. No news is good news. Yeah. And you're off enjoying this beautiful life. Okay. Okay. I was hoping maybe you've gotten like an angry DM from a... Um, a from spouse? A oh, you know what? Disgruntled boyfriend being like... No, no, no. Well, here's we what have. she left out. We have... We got a message maybe from our website. Oh my gosh, I would need to go find it. It was absurd. Oh no. It was like he was clearly so like crazy. Okay. He didn't like our advice. Okay. This is, see, this is what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm going to find it after the show for you. <laughs> and you guys aren't missing out on anything, but it was just from a nut. And okay. I hope that our advice to her was to leave him because the email was seriously unhinged. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Okay, first up to your toasters. Hi, Jack and Turdy Lou, crossed out Mary Orton. <laughs> Long time listener, first time writer. Here's the gist. When I met my husband and I had these huge fake boobs, we fell in love and decided we wanted to have kids. So I ended up getting a second boob job to drastically decrease the size since I knew that during pregnancy and breastfeeding, her boobs getting even bigger. Fast forward to a couple kids later, I decided I want a mommy makeover. I had a tummy tuck, a lift, and new implants. I went back to big implants because I thought that's what I wanted. It was a long recovery, and afterwards my husband said I should be done. We have kids now, and it's nerve-wracking for him the thought of something going wrong while under the knife. I agreed at the time, but now it's two years since, and I hate my boobs. They are so big and cartoonish, and I'm just not the 21-year-old girl with big boobs that I used to be. I'm scared to bring this up to him. I made my bed, so should I just lay in it? It's not causing any physical pain, but with my style changing, I just feel like big boobs don't go with my aesthetic I'm trying to achieve. Any advice? Love ya. Bye. Wow, this is layered. I have so many different thoughts. I have so many thoughts. So she's had it already done three times. Three times. Damn. Is that... Is that nor normal to have like them made smaller in anticipation of having children? Um. Yes, I think. Well, is that, like, do I a don't, lot of people do that? I don't think a lot of people do that. I've heard of people like um, making them smaller, like after children, and then wishing that they waited because they wind up having more kids, and then your boobs get bigger again. Okay. But to go big and then small and then kids and then big—that's a lot of surgeries. And I feel like I'm looking forward to the day where I get my one. But I'm also a little bit like nervous about it. But you just like casually, what if I just got a boob job today? Is right. you know make me th think differently about it. Yeah. Well, I think in general, your body, if you like for your life, and if you want smaller boobs, like you should get them. And I understand completely where your husband's coming from. Like it is nerve wracking, and surgeries are a big deal. But you can't like live the rest of your life feeling uncomfortable and just not happy because of that and you've been through it three times already but the what I want to say and this isn't helpful to you since you're already in this position but just like to other people is like these are really big changes to be making on a whim yes I feel as though you should want it for years before you do it that's what I was just gonna say I was gonna say I think you have to ask yourself two questions number one and like be honest with yourself is there any part of you that thinks you're always just wanting what you what you don't have mm. Because I so, not to be a male apologist here, but I do understand his concern that this is major surgery, yeah. right? Um, so you don't want to keep doing this. So I would ask like, okay, are you sure it's it's what you want or it's or are you perhaps just thinking I want what I don't have? Yeah, and, and if, you want that now and maybe in five years you'll yes. want them big again. Like maybe you should just go medium. And then the second question that I would ask is if the most recent time you did it was just two years ago, how long have you wanted the change? And just make sure it's been like many months. Many years. I'm sorry. I, I would say many I years. Sit, but yeah. I would sit on a cosmetic decision for years. It's something that too. has to bother me for years. I have to be so too. sure about it. Not just yes. like, trend. I know trends change and yeah. you might want something now. And I feel like when people do stuff when they're younger, that's yeah. always what they say. Like, I just wish I waited. Yeah. So my advice to everyone is like to wait on these things. My advice to you, I also would say to wait because you might change your mind again yeah. um but I understand like why you want to go small but now I'm worried that you won't want to stay small now I'm worried about that that's what I'm worried about so so just give yourself some time to make sure that it's absolutely what you want so that it can be the like last that you, time and that you, you live do with it these big boots are so long that you absolutely hate them and then yeah. by the time you change them you would never go back do you know how because like I yeah I would say like so, so that you make sure that it's the last it's the last time that you do it but do you still have to have them redone every 
they 10 years say, or something or whatever yeah they say like every 10 years but i yeah. wonder if if that's like without an implant like if you don't have an implant and it's just like you're taking your implant or maybe you're getting a smaller one i think if it's, mm. if there's anything in there you have to do every decade years. or something okay. yeah um so so you could wait for the 10 year okay and then go small yeah i like that yeah that's a good that's a good option if you have to do it anyway um i have never had any plastic surgery of any kind but funny story um i got an email from someone this is now many years ago and she lives in south carolina and she said hey i don't know if you know this but there is a plastic surgery practice here who's using your images on their website and the and the um, images is there a higher compliment no 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 it was specifically for their breast reduction page that that's where they felt my images were needed um so they said that so they first were- of all how dare you second of all i immediately emailed them and was like yeah so go ahead and remove those images Wait, so what were they saying that you, that you were a client no so they weren't using my name they had just they needed like a background image for of like the a top smiling of the woman. landing page of like a sm- yeah a of, smiling of woman. like a smiling woman you are kind and of like took textbook my- smiling woman <laughs> well there's yeah so they, they found up uh, I'm, I'm assuming they just like Googled, smiling you know, woman. smiling woman and I popped up and they just. Even though you were headless they, for so long. Even though I was headless for so long. Um, yeah. So that was. You've never done like any modeling where you like have like, no, you're not part no, of like no, a stock no. image database. Absolutely not. But this has happened to me twice. Um, so once with this, this plastic surgery practice was using my images that they had just like ripped from my website. And then the second time that this happened um, was there was this big uh, building development in Midtown Manhattan and they needed, you know, on, on like the billboards that they put to cover the sort of ground level of all the construction. Mm-hmm. And they have renderings on those billboards of like what, what the building will look like. And they've got like fake people walking through lobbies and whatever. And they took a picture of me and I, uh, walking down the street and they cut out my figure and put it like bigger than life-size Jackie okay so this is you were kind of the face of the building no this was like so there's like an eight foot version of me walking in midtown Manhattan so like for for the two years that it was up there and I was you know trying to get it taken down but then I was just like oh whatever I would constantly have friends who would be like selfing in front of the the Mary Orton on that is Fifth Avenue. Yeah. So hysterical and humiliating. No, really. not. Yeah. I feel like if you look at Mary Orton's content, like yeah, if I was building a building <laughs> no. and I wanted like a glamorous woman to be the face of it, like that's your like vibe. No. That's what you exude. It was like it was like me in a in a like a gray pantsuit or something walking. It was just very I, I was it was very it was giving stock image. It's is, giving is smiling what it was women. Giving. Like smiling, <laughs> like everyone wants you to sell their products. No. Do you have a picture of it? Um I this was like 2014, so it would probably oh, take me a minute. Maybe a different to, phone. To dig it up. Yeah, oh definitely this is like seven phones ago. Like even yeah. though that's illegal and you know you have to protect yeah. your image, yeah. I would also like subconsciously like be very flattered. Um, I I was just humiliated. That was the primary feeling that I felt for those for those two years. Every time you should have said, "I want a free apartment." I, I, I should have. I really should have. That's fair. It was a commercial building, so they would have had to Orton know, HQ. Rezone it. Yeah, Orton, Orton HQ. Orton headquarters. I like that. Yeah, yeah. missed opportunity on my part. Yeah. Huh. Well, um, I, so yeah, wait on the boob job is yeah. all to say. Just make sure. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's, it's hard on your body. So this, we want this to be the final one until 10 years. But I like our idea of waiting the 10 years. Like, and even though, yeah, you're uncomfortable for eight years, like then you won't want to go back. You can be sure of that. Next question. Hi, Jackson, Mary Orton. New mama here and looking for some advice. Obviously, this is years in the future if it ever even presents itself, but here's the situation. I have been deeply insecure about my nose since as early as fifth grade and would cry that I couldn't afford a nose job. I have since grown up, gotten married to my dream man, and still haven't gotten a nose job. I got the guy and wedding pictures have come and gone, so getting a nose job now just isn't at the top of my list, even though if the opportunity presented itself, I would definitely get one. So eight months ago, I gave birth to the most perfect angel girl, and immediately I knew she got my nose. 
Obviously, as a mom looking at my daughter, she's perfection. I hate that I even noticed she has my most hated feature on myself, but on her, stunning. While I will always tell her that if she came to me crying one day that she hates her nose, I will understand that all too well. Should I be the mom that keeps reminding her that she's perfect the way she is or allow her to get a nose job when she's old enough because I don't want her to look at herself in the mirror the way that I do to myself? Thank you for your time and advice. Love a mama who wants her girl to have the world. Oh, okay. So first of all, I will say there is no way you know that she has your nose. Yeah. Like the the changes that my, you know, when when Coco, for example, was born for the first year of her life, we were like, she's Rich's clone. I was like, I had nothing to do with this baby. And then now she's like my, my twin. She looks exactly like I did as a little girl. So they change so much. There's no way you are looking at an eight month nose. I mean, you may feel like there are some similarities, yeah. but you never know. You never know. But well, operating under the premise that she so grows up she and has does. her nose. I would say two things. Number one, make sure, try to make sure that you never say something disparaging about your nose in front of her. Because I, I have a I have a friend who had this situation with her mom and, she, and her mom would always talk about how she hated her ankles and was like, oh, I have thick ankles. I hate my ankles, blah, blah, blah. And so that that like instill and, and it's not like she was telling the daughter like your ankles are thick and hideous. Yeah. But she was saying disparaging things about her own and the daughter has eyeballs and was like, oh, okay, so I guess I should be, you know, ashamed of mine. So so try not to do that. Yeah. Like you, a project at all, which is it's right. hard because it's such a big part of like how you think of right. yourself and like just how you are. Yeah. But if she does come to the conclusion that she doesn't like her nose, like let it not be a seed that you planted in exactly, some way or other. Exactly, exactly. And so I think it would be obvious to think, well, I'm never going to say anything to her about her nose, but also make sure you're not saying things about your nose in front of her. And then the second thing I would say is if it does get to that point where she feels the way that you felt, tell her this story that you're telling us. Be like, I also hated it. And then I had you and I loved it. And now it doesn't bother me. And now I feel like it's this special thing that we have and whatever. And then let her make her decision. Yeah. That's what I would say. It sounds like it still bothers her though. Her, Yeah. The mom. That's true. That's true. So maybe I would just like let her grow up, see what happens. I mean, a yeah. lot of girls do get their nose done kind of young and like it's, no big deal maybe do a mother daughter nose job one day if yeah. you both come to the same conclusion but like I would try and like zoom out on it and like even zoom out on her face like put it to the like back of your mind as best as you can yeah. like it's not an issue for today and even if someone has like a good nose everyone has insecurities everyone has things that like they can't wait to fix when they're older or things that like they think everybody's looking at them for and it might not be their nose but everybody has those things yes. so it's it's just a part of life to like be self-conscious about something yeah. um you could fix it if you want to and or don't if you don't want to but i would just like take the pressure off the situation a little bit like even if she has her nose and it's a bad nose like okay yeah okay we're gonna be okay yeah and then let her and then let her make her her decision and even if you, you know, even if this mom still hates her nose or, or you know, doesn't love it, she's clearly found some acceptance and yeah. comfort in the connection with the with the daughter who potentially has it. So I would tell her that when she's old enough to make her own decision. And like, how bad can a nose be? Like, it's not yeah. a great, but like, there are some people who have like famously bad noses who like never change them. And like, still, it's not like they're could hugely be her greatest success, strength. Could be her greatest strength. She, hugely successful people. Yes. She could become a, yeah. I think it's just not as big of a deal as you're making it up to be because you're already worried about something that's like so far down the line. It's like clear that it consumes your thoughts. But if you can, like release yourself from it yeah. for the time being because yes. it's okay. Yes. It's just a nose. And they can be changed if need be. Yes. And at the end of the day, like you do not know that, that too. she that has too. your nose. You really don't. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, third and final, dear toasters. So far, we've been aligned. Maybe this one will drive Mary and I apart. I love my all goes so. Yeah, I love my husband, but sometimes his jokes just aren't funny. We've had a few family <sighs> gatherings recently, and at each one, he makes the joke that I'm pregnant to his parents. 
He thinks it's funny, but his parents look so excited only to be crushed a minute later when they find out it's a joke. I told him to stop and that it's not funny at all, but he insists that they that him and his family have that type of relationship where it's normal to joke around. They do not have any grandkids and always let us know where they're waiting, so this feels truly cruel. This isn't a funny joke, right? Am I a wet blanket or reasonably annoyed? Well, this is an easy one. Reasonably annoyed. Period. Period. I hate when people like make unfunny jokes oh. and they're like, I just like to joke around. I'm yeah. like, well, where's the joke, bro? Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> telling someone that you're pregnant. First of all, pregnancy is never something to be joked about. That's like what every like adult yes. person understands at this point, especially when it's a sensitive subject. There aren't kids. Who knows what's going on? Like, it's just never something that you joke about, period. So for that reason, he's wrong on all counts. But like, say it was a joke about something else. Like, it's got to be funny to be a joke. Right. And I, I have to say, I I know so many people who have made these jokes and I know your husband, like there is no malintent. Like this, it, he really does not appreciate. And usually, it, you know, this, these jokes come from people who have never, you know, lost a baby or struggled to conceive or whatever. And so you just got to tell him that. You have to tell him like, first of all, it's not funny. Like you're talking about my body like yeah. it's weird it's just weird and like on its face makes me uncomfortable and that should be enough for him you know right to, right to like not keep pushing the joke but also and it's also mean to his parents who keep getting their hopes up like that's yeah. not a joke to tell someone something untrue and say, like then say oh kidding like okay yeah like you're yeah you're and for whenever the day does come that you are pregnant there it's the boy who cried wolf it's like okay you and your jokes goodbye this needs to be like shut down shut down down and and maybe you just need to explain that to him. like yeah. like you know I don't know if you guys have tried or not tried or where you're at or if you even plan to have children but you know maybe he needs to be told like it's just not something that you joke like about. this is just not something you joke about but also if you need a reason like what if we do have trouble yeah or whatever or yeah. what if you know other people in your family have trouble and it's just it's a sensitive thing that's no, not a joke and it's he's probably like you know we joke like this in my family all the time but clearly by his parents reaction they don't and it's like maybe he's been making these jokes and nobody knows how to tell him like yeah. we don't like your jokes yeah and that's a wife's job to say yeah. we don't like your jokes yeah we're not gonna take yeah. them anymore yeah yeah this this gotta put a lid on that one yeah yikes yikes but at least that's case closed we can yeah. agree there and and i will say like i i do think because I, I mean, we've all seen people make these jokes and it's often like innocently meant. Like yeah. He, he's not a, we're not saying he's a bad guy. No, he just doesn't understand. You just understand. have to be clear to him that this is not funny. Yeah, not yeah. funny, period. Yeah. Okay, well, that's Dear Toasters and that's our show with Mary Orton. Gosh, I'm Jackie, s- thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming here. I'm so excited that we got to host together in studio together. The start of a beautiful friendship. I got to meet Brew. It's just a... A perfect day. Isn't honestly. Brew? Look at him. He's sitting on the remote he's, podcasting he's chair, just off camera, and he's he's just a a gift. He brought a he gift po- to us all. He has his blanket up there. Yeah. We can take a picture of him, and I'll post it so you yeah. guys can see. Like he he's got sleeping soundly, perhaps because we didn't talk enough about sports, perhaps, or we didn't talk enough about Brew. True, which would lull True. anyone to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will be back tomorrow with a remote episode with Lauren Elizabeth. Very exciting. Mary Orton, where can everyone follow you and keep up with you? Where can they become Ortonites officially? Oh my gosh. Um, on Instagram, Mary at Mary Orton. I also I, I also have the TikTok, okay. Mary.Orton, but I um, very uh, seldom and posting there so it's 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 instagram for me instagram for you works for me she's a reels queen by the way i feel (sighs) like i didn't even hype that up enough like content creator really content that you need in your life that you didn't even realize that you needed just like tips for women funny content (laughs) motherhood stuff great style tips you have fantastic style and original style which we love we love that we love originality so check out mary orton we love you very much and we'll see you tomorrow love ya Bye.